Hi, I'm Mengzhe. Today, I will be talking with Mrs. Marine Hubo, an Australian independent scholar, and her husband Robert. In March, Marine announced on her Twitter she would like to visit Xinjiang next year, but her plan attracted some unexpected attention. She was attacked as bot, a show, and a propagandist. Why would a plan to visit Xinjiang make her the target of these vicious attacks? Let's hear her story today. Thank you for joining us. At least 11 Chinese universities have said they will lend you their support during your planned trip to Xinjiang next year. Have they been in touch with you? How will your trip unfold? Well, I uh, was very pleased to hear that there was 11 universities. Um, and I do want to work with um, Chinese universities. But before I do that, I have to get uh, an Australian university on board because if I only go with a uh, Chinese university, the West will say, oh, you have been influenced by China. China will only let you see what they want you to see. Uh, and so that will defeat the objective. What I want to do is get either the University of Melbourne or the University of Sydney on board to work with a Chinese university. Um, and possibly or American University. Um, there are very good talkers and academics in, in, in America that speak against uh, the anti-China narrative. Professor Wolf, Richard Wolf, uh, Jeffrey Sachs of Columbia University. If we could get a number together and we thrash out a, a robust methodology that is accepted by, by the international academic world. We then go to Xinjiang and say, well, we, we're going with this kind of um, background. The research will have meaning. Why are you interested in going to Xinjiang next year? Why Xinjiang and why next year? The poverty alleviation program looks quite dramatic in Xinjiang. Uh, I noticed there is a population growth in Xinjiang. Uh, there's a GDP growth um, and that made me interested because Australia is going in the reverse. We're putting people into poverty as China takes people out of poverty. So you said Australia is put people in the poverty but Xinjiang lift the people out of poverty. Why do you say this? Because Australia because definitely is a developed country but China generally speaking is a developing country. Well, that's correct, but uh, as a developed country, we haven't developed equally or evenly. And the rich tend to have got richer. At the bottom level, we've got people living on the streets. Now, China has a, a policy of um, common prosperity, which um, is an admirable um, policy to have. Whereas um, the West, uh, and Australia included, it's more self-interest would always intrude over um, the general benefit of the, the population. Mm -hmm. But the, one of the biggest uh, accusations in Western society or Western media towards Xinjiang is genocide. But you want to see the poverty alleviation. Do you believe there's a genocide in Xinjiang? So I can't give an opinion until I've actually been there and seen it. But from a prime basic point of view, it sounds a ridiculous thing to say when you have so many happy people, Uyghurs dancing, uh, you've got um, a happy community. How can genocide be going on? Where are the refugees from China flooding? Uh, there's so many questions that make genocide an illogical thing. In actual fact, uh, all indications indicate that, that uh, people are happy to be there and share part of that prosperity that has been provided by the country. After you announced your plan on social media, you got attacked as a cheap propagandist for the Communist Party of China, a bold show, and you were questioned about your capability to present the truth. How do you respond to these attacks? Well, basically, uh, the first attack was that I didn't have any academic qualifications. Um, uh, that was soon put put to rest because I have and I had a university right. But then they moved to, oh, well, you must be working for the Chinese government. Um, you must be uh, a shrill, uh, uh, someone who's false. How do I take it? I don't care what they call me because it doesn't make me 
I don't become what they call me. Do you think they are paid to denounce Xinjiang and you? Um, I have a feeling that there is some coordination in it, but I'm not prepared to say or even guess who's doing it, but it looks like a pretty sophisticated attack. And I have to say, when I get asked for an interview with the Western press, I think, oh gosh, here, go, here goes a, um, an interview where they're going to make fun of me. Where when I get interviewed by the Chinese journalists, they're actually seeking the truth. And I'm sure I'll get more interviews from the West to, to try and negate this, but that doesn't matter, they can have a go. I'm after the truth. You said in an interview that you reached to Adrian Zenz, but he didn't respond and block you on Twitter. Tell me about the story. I soon found out that all the stories about Jing Zhang um, led back to Adrian Zenz, even the ones from the BBC. So I thought, oh, look, I'll go to Jing Zhang, I'll contact him, I'll get his field research notes, I'll get his methodology and his published papers. So I contacted him through Twitter, but it soon fell apart because he didn't send me his methodology or his notes that he researched in Xinjiang. I was asking questions he didn't want. Well, he first of all said, I'm nothing. I have, I have no qualifications and I'm nothing. He blocked me and then Twitter suspended me without telling me why. And I said, well, look, I'll just go to my local university and I'll get them to write to you and tell you that I, I, I was affiliated. And I had published papers with that university and they did. And then without any comment, I came back on Twitter. They just put me back. They didn't explain anything. Um, but at the time I was upset, I thought we live, I thought the West was proud of its freedom of speech. If it's proud of its freedom of speech, how come I'm being silenced? One could argue that um, it's not neutral, that he's actually being paid by uh, various either US government officials or US government um, departments to uh, to produce the research that um, that he's come up with. If your donor says, oh, you must uh, produce this result in order for us to um, have what we want, um, that's biased, biased uh, research. I, I have a feeling that that is the case. We are independent, truly independent, uh, to the extent that um, have been offered funding from various organisations and we, we have refused them for the simple reason that we actually want to remain independent to be uh, as a true scholar that's not influenced by their donors. China is Australia's biggest trading partner, yet Australian propaganda has propagated the idea that China is the enemy. Like SB has fabricated lies about China and Xinjiang. How do you view the Sinophobia in Australia and how Western media manufactures this? Sinophobia is very old in Australia, long before Adrian Zenz added his bit. Um, you can look at Sinophobia going back to about the 1850s with the gold rush, where the Chinese came over. At that time, the Australians hated the Chinese because they were, they were better and more efficient in, in get, getting gold. And this has gone on through the decades into McCarthyism, um, Australia being influenced by America, uh, America doing significant contribution to World War I and World War II. Um, we think, ah, oh, America will save us. But things have changed and America is now harming us. Do you really think the uh, Australian government is care about the people in Xinjiang or they just follow the American government agenda? Uh, I believe they follow the American agenda. There seems to be a certain fear of America as well. Uh, America does severe sanctions and causes quite a lot of harm in the world with it. And we do have nonsense. We have a lot of nonsense about oh, China's aggressive and we better prepare for war. China will be attacking us. I don't know where these politicians get their ideas from because China is one of the most peaceful countries um, in the world today and has been, to, has been so for some time. Uh, so it, we've got about 32 or more American military bases around the Philippines and including Australia facing Beijing and we don't see that as being aggressive but if China militarizes the South China Sea all of a sudden ah oh, China's aggressive. Now what has happened since then to cause 
the um, the the sinophobia? Is it McCarthyism? Is it um, a, a false narrative about oh China is going to march south and take over this empty land of Australia? Yeah. Um, I, I I don't think there are any signs of any of that to make that a reality. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's trying to create a narrative out of nothing. Uh, China has been um, very good with its Belt and Road to make sure that other countries can be prosperous as well, so yeah. that they can actually trade with China. Now that's very important for them to live, lift their standard of living. And, and, um, and I can't see anything more admirable than, um, than actually assisting these second and third world countries to lift their standard of living, um, which uh, the Americans, where they've dominated certain second and third, third world countries, have not really tried to lift the, the prosperity of that country. They've just gouged it and taken out the resources or the, the, the benefits of those countries at very little cost to them and to enrich the, the, uh, the American uh, economy.